Today's video is brought to you by StoryboardThat.com. Please visit TeacherCast.net slash StoryboardThat for a limited time offer. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another TeacherCast screencast. My name is Jeff Bradbury. I'll be your host today. Today, we're going to be looking at the brand new ScreenFlow 5.0 from Telestream, where you can find more information out at Telestream.net. Of course, we're going to share with you how to record a screencast, give you guys some great tips, and all of our information can be found over on our website, teachercast.net. And we ask that if you like this video, please, on the video box, hit the like button, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel over here at teachercast.net slash YouTube. So here we have our screen flow screen, and we're going to go through the basics of how to do a screen recording here. And first thing that we want to do is figure out what screen flow looks like here. We have a couple things to go through. We have our canvas, which is right here, where you can see we manipulate all of our video, and we'll talk a lot about that today. Down here, we have the timeline, and you can see we can scrub through the timeline here. And over here, we have all of our properties, or sometimes we call that the inspector. And let's take a look at some of these tabs over here on the inspector. One of the new things is we can click on this last tab here, and we can bring up all of the media that is in ScreenFlow. Here you can see we have a video, and it also splits off the audio track. If we want to, we actually can click over here. This is one of the new features. We can check out our iPhoto library, our iTunes library. We can bring in our pictures and video. We can do all of that stuff, and of course, we can search for things as well. If we don't want to do that, we can, of course, come down here and do Add Media, and that brings up this dialog box to Add Media as well. Of course, we can use the zoom in tools and look this in visual view or list view. To the left of this, we have a T, which shows some text. So in other words, if I want to insert text into here, I've got all these different controls. And for instance, if I'm right here, let's say in my presentation, I can add a text box simply by hitting the plus sign, and that brings up this text box right here. I'm going to drag it out here so we can see it, and we can click in here, and we can say teachercast.net. We can make this bigger if we want to. And with this text, we can left justify it, right justify it, center justify it. We can make it bold. If we highlight this here, we can do bold and italicized. We can choose to fill in this here as a solid color if we want. We can, of course, put an image in here if we want. Let's find a nice image. Let's come to our desktop and let's do this. If I wanted to, I can actually put an image in there. That's a neat little design there. If I wanted to, I can outline it. And if you can see here, if I want, I can take the background off. And let's see if I want to make the background blue. I can certainly do that. And that looks kind of cool there. And so we can change this however we need to. It gives a lot of good stuff. Again, here, if we want to, we can change the font. We can do a lot of different things here with the text. Um, over here in the scrubber, if we want to make this text a little bit longer, we can see here right now it's got a duration of 12 seconds, and we can have that be on the screen for that long. Great. Next, over here to the left, we have this annotations bar. And if we want to make an annotation right here, and that's... We can certainly hit the plus bar on this, and that brings up this annotation bar down here. And if I want to, I can do a couple things. I can put an arrow. I can put a straight line. I can put a closed-in square. I can put an open square. I can put a circle. So why would we need to do something like that? Well, first of all, we can put a circle here. We can make it a really thick circle or a thin circle. We can give it a shadow. We can change the color of it. We can outline the circle. We can do an awful lot of good stuff here. Let's say we have this text box here. I can take this text box here. I'm going to add another one. Grab a text box. I'm going to draw the box around here. And let's just say that I want to make it a little bit thinner. And let's see. We can change that around here. I can outline it. I can put a shadow on it. And I can do some pretty cool things. And if people still don't know what that is, I can put an arrow here. And I can make that arrow as thick as I want, and I can outline it as much as I want here and give it some shadow. So we can do a lot of things here with annotations. Going over one more. 
we have these callouts. Now, callouts are interesting, and because a callout is basically a way to show what's happening on the screen. So let's see. I'm gonna X out of here. I'm gonna come on over here and let's add a call out. I'm gonna hit the action button here. And there's a nice little video here. This talks a lot about what a video action is and what the callouts are for. And I highly recommend checking that out. And so basically I have this this circle. And let's say that you were recording your iOS device, which is one of the new features here of ScreenFlow 5. You can, of course, put down where your fingers are touching. And so I can put this bigger or smaller. I can change the color of this. Let's change this to blue. And I can do an awful lot of things. I can make multiple callouts, multiple circles. I can do an awful lot of things with callouts here. This is, like I said, this is one of those new features, and we're still kind of exploring how to use it here over at TeacherCast. Okay, so moving one more button to the left here, we have our callout button. And by hitting this action here, we are able to actually manipulate the screen and show what's going on. So I'm going to hit this action button here, and we have a nice little dialogue. And you'll see down here, we have a little call out that happens here. And so what I can actually do from this point here is I can bring up this screen here. If you notice, this is changing the opacity. And let's do this on the foreground color. And if I wanted to, I can blur things. I can change the opacity. I can zoom in. You can see my mouse pointer here is zooming in. I can also put a border around this. So if I wanted to call out a specific part of the screen, I certainly can. And these are a great way to do that. All right, one more button to the left. We have our screen recording information here. We can choose to show our mouse or not show our mouse. We can, of course, have our click effects, meaning when we click on our screen, we can let our users know if we have that or not. We can change the opacity on that. We can zoom in on our mouse pointer to show where that certainly is coming from. We can make a sound on a click and we can change the volume of all of that stuff. And also, really, really neat feature here, we can show our keystrokes. Quite often we're showing students maybe how to type or where to put a password in or something to that sort. We can put all that stuff together. Over here we have our audio controls. And if I click on this audio here. You can see it's all highlighted in yellow. That means it's active. Now we have our audio controls here. We can up and down the volume. You can see how that changes there on the bottom left. We can have ducking, which is an interesting term if you're not familiar with audio, but ducking basically means that one audio track will duck under another audio track if you layer them on top of each other. We can mute all of the audio. We can process, we can have smooth, we can change some effects. So if we want to have a chamber or a large room, we certainly can do that. We can remove background noise. For, for instance, if you're doing this in a classroom and you've got some uh, extra background noise, maybe from a fan or an air conditioner in the room, we can filter that. And of course, there are more added audio filters that you can do, but we can talk about that for another screencast. Lastly, over here, we have our video. I'm gonna activate that by clicking here on the video. And for here, we can scale the video in and out, or we can change the position. We can crop the video however we want to. We can crop the left, we can crop the right. We can add reflection. So if I bring this video up, I can add a reflection to it, which is a neat little feature there if you wanted to show some mirroring things. I can put a shadow on it. I can do anything that I want to with the video. So there's a lot of neat tools here that uh, ScreenFlow 5.0 gives you. If I want to talk a little bit about this timeline down here, you can see we've got two layers. We've got our screen layer and we've got our audio layer. And then up here we have all of our actions, things like our text is here, text effects. And over here I have a call out that I stuck in here. And again, here was that teacher cast word that we put in. If we want to throw a graphic in here, I can simply come up here to the media library and I'm going to say add media and let's put this icon here. See, this popped up over here and all I'm going to do is drag this down. And right there, that brings this icon in. I can change it however I want to. I can make it bigger. I can do a lot of things if I want to drag this. I can rotate it however I need to. There's a lot of neat things that you can do here with both graphics and video. One of the things that people sometimes ask is, can you do picture in a picture? And I'm just going to grab this screen recording. I'm going to bring it over here. Shrink this down just a little bit simply by shrinking this down. And if I put this over top here, 
Notice it makes up a new layer. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this to make it smaller. And you can see here that we have a picture in a picture effect. So can you have more than one video running at the same time on a screencast? Absolutely. And that's really cool if you're editing at sports shots or maybe the school play or something to that effect. So other things that we can do here is work on transitions. Transitions are kind of cool. If we have a clip here, and if we have another clip here, we can create a transition simply by overlapping it. And you'll see that there is a transition that happens here. We can have all of these different transitions here. And just by clicking on this, And you'll see the, the transition there taking place. That audio is a little bit hot, so I think we're going to kill that audio down just a little bit. And this audio, too, we can clear, kill it down. So you can see that ScreenFlow 5.0 certainly has a lot of tools. I've been using ScreenFlow for the last three years. Um, I like ScreenFlow. Um, as you'll read in the article that I have listed on the um, description below. Um, I, I do a lot of my editing in Final Cut, and I also do a lot of my editing in ScreenFlow. And I also find that if I'm doing a simple, simple video, um, it is always quicker for me to run it through ScreenFlow and do some pr pretty cool things um, than sticking it into Apple's uh, Premiere Final Cut system there. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out on Twitter. You can find me at TeacherCast, and you can, of course, check out our website, TeacherCast.net, for this and other great educational screencasts. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for listening to us today, and I hope you check out all of our podcasts over at TeacherCast.net slash iTunes and TeacherCast.net slash YouTube. Thank you for subscribing. I'll see you later.